This is a demo of MaxSurf structure. This is the hull of a trawler. And we're going to show you how we get to this point of modeling the primary hull structure, the plate, the transverse frames, and the bulkheads, as well as the stringers. MaxSurf structure has some awesome built in tools to make this process go very quickly during the preliminary design stages. So let's close this model and open up a model that has no structure defined yet. So what MaxSurf does is it reads in the actual surface model of this hull. And so what we see right now, uh, there is no structure yet. We can turn on the uh, water lines, buttock lines, and um, frame lines of the hull. So the layout of these section lines same as what we want the frame spacing to be in this, in this case. What we'll do first is we're going to turn the water lines off and we're going to select what we will want to be our frame lines, our actual frames rather. So I go ahead and select all of these stations. I can also lasso this if I want to make it quicker. And I say, under the frame pull down, I say add frames. And we're going to uh, give it a standard opening at first where we can specify the uh, depth of the web with a whole number of different options here. And we're going to give it a six inch radius. And we're going to make the web depth 12 inches. And that will generate the uh, starting point of the frames and down here you can see the frames in this view so I can turn on the actual frame numbering here which is consistent with the, the numbering that we set up uh, before and then what we're going to do is we're going to specify some uh, more detail in the frames so what I want to do here is I'm going to select this window frames 2 through 4, right click to define some more properties, and we're going to uh, clip off the bottom, I'm sorry, in this view of the opening, we're going to clip off the bottom at 40 inches, and we'll see what that does in a second. So when I look at uh, that frame, part view, we pick frame 40, what this did was it clipped off the bottom of this open. So I can scroll through the parts right here and see how we clip those frames. All the other frames at this point look like this. So that's what that does. We're going to do this uh, at a couple of different levels for the different frames. So next we're going to pick frames 5, Frames 6 through 14. Right click that to change those properties. And we're going to also make the bottom of that opening also at 40 inches. But we're also going to add an opening in those frames. In this case, it's going to be a horizontal slot. And we can give that a name. And we're going to specify that to be at a height of 23 inches. We make the radius 8 inches and we'll make the width 60 inches. And if we want to, we can also put a flange in those openings. Uh, in MaxSurf nomenclature, they call that a rider bar. So we'll keep that thickness the same as the frame. And we'll make that be on both sides of the frame. And when I do that, this should update. And you can now see what those openings look like. I can scroll through this to look at what those frames look like with that, with that opening put in there. So what I'll do next is I'll 
change the height of the bottom for frames 15 through 17. Set properties. And for those frames, we're going to set the bottom opening at 60 inches. These are inches off the baseline. I just wanted to give you a little bit of variety of what these frames look like. Scroll through um, this view. You should see the height change. There's the change in height right there. What we're going to do next is uh, define stringers. Now, to define stringers, MaxSurf has made this process um, very quick. And depending on the hull geometry, this can go uh, much more smooth because it takes advantage of the actual nerve surface capability. So I just go in here and I say generate stringers. I'm going to call for eight stringers in this case. And I want the stringers to start at station 18 and go from there to station 3. So I know that station 18 starts at this longitudinal position. So I'm just going to copy that over to here. And then I know I want it to end at station 3. So that is at this longitudinal position, negative 166. So I'm just going to copy that over to here. these two as well. And you can see how these stringers are going to look when you look at an expanded view. And that actually looks pretty good. And I can turn the stringers on. So you can see how quick it was to do that and you look at it in a different view. Um, we also have to actually define the stringers themselves. So uh, there are a couple of ways of doing that. One way is I can go in this view and select all the stringers, right click, click properties, and I can give them whatever color I want. But this is where I actually select from a library which stringer size I want to use. And I can also select the type of cutout that I want to use for the stringers. And I'll also specify a material. And if it is a longitudinal girder, you would specify that here. But in this case, these are just hull stringers. And if I look at this in a rendered view, turn my frames on, and render it, you can see what we've defined so far, including the cutouts. And next, what we're going to do are hull plates. And to do that, we're going to turn off rendering and we can turn off the stringers. I see my section line. So there are a couple of ways of doing plates. You can specify uh, the section lines and the water lines. You can also turn on parametric lines of the hull. And it's really just a matter of selecting uh, the forward and aft boundaries and the top and bottom boundaries of each plate. If you want to, you can actually add a surface plate for the entire surface that's defined in the model. So I'm doing that here just to show you what that would look like. And this is one big plate. Uh, of course, that's not the way you would do it when you build the hull. So we're going to uh, delete that and show you how to select individual uh, lines to actually lay out your plates on the hull. So what we'll do is we'll turn rendering back off. And the way this process works is going to turn on the hull edges. So we'll select, for example, the top of the plate down to the bottom of the plate, I'll use this parametric.
subject line here, then an at boundary and a forward boundary. And just say add plate. This is where I specify the thickness of the material. And there's our first plate. And you just work your way down or back, whatever your preference is. You can do this in any order you want. And you just start laying out your plates. This process just continues until you get to the point where uh, you've got everything laid out. Let me show you, for example, what goes on in the bulb because there's a lot more curvature there. In this plate, what we'll do is we'll select back here, here, and that will go from down there to there. Add a plate. To show you is are the tools for evaluating the uh, formability of the plates. So let's render what we have so far. And to actually uh, calculate everything out, there's a command you can say calculate frames. Um, you can do these individually calculate all stringers, calculate all plates. And it's actually developing those plates when you do that command. You can also just say calculate all parts and do everything in one shot. Uh, but what, what I want to show you here is when you're looking at these plates in this view, in the part view, this is where you get a lot of insight into the actual plate. So this particular plate, uh, which is plate one, that's how I know it's plate one. It, oh my god, I calculated plate one. I thought I just did that. Let's see. There we go. So, uh, looking at this view of that plate, this is where I can actually see the uh, lines. Let me turn off the water lines and actually turn on the frame lines and the stringer lines that are overlaid on that plate. But to really see what it would take to form this plate, this is where I can use these very powerful tools. I can actually look at the strain in the plate in the forming direction. And I can also look at the strain in the plate uh, 90 degrees to the forming direction. And it actually uses a finite element method to do this. But the other uh, important piece of information here is up here in the upper left. It's telling you the difference in the girths along these edges before and after doing the forming. And this is really the best gauge of the developable, the developed ability of the plates. And here I can also scroll through and look at all of the parts. Let me turn this back off. I'll expand this and make it bigger. And I can look at multiple different plates. Uh, let's turn on the, this is the plate that was up in the bow. That will actually have some very interesting uh, profiles for the strain because of how much double curvature there is. You can see there's a huge amount of uh, girth difference. So this is a, a more involved plate performing. I'll show you some of the other parts. Still have some work to do on a couple of these things. But you can see as you scroll down, um, these are actual views of what these frames would look like. And this is actually the rider bar that goes inside of that opening. And you can see the cutouts in the frames. All of these parts can be uh, exported um, a number of different ways. As DXF, I just files, as ship constructor files, and even as native Rhino files. So, this gives you an idea of how you use MaxSurf structure to define plates, transverse frames, and stringers. Thanks.